different but yeah it depends on what I'm dealing with at that moment maybe tone or technique just really yeah okay really different do you, do, do you find that your brain goes much faster suddenly yeah. that you're able to think of 20 things in each bar yeah or yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. because that was a little bit um, what I'd like to work on mm -hmm. today I and mean, there's so much of your playing that I really adore you've got a great sound and and you offer this a range of articulations um, and dynamics. I thought, it, for, for my taste, um, I felt as if, like the micro dynamics, the micro phrasing, mm -hmm. like within each bar, within each mm, cell of music, was very nicely thought out. I wonder whether sometimes we need to feel a longer line. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and I think an, an easy way um, that we can um, consider is you do a lot of echoes when we have a sequence or repetition. You do a lot of echoes. And sometimes I think actually it would be much better for the line mm. if you did a pure forte. Ah. For example, when we're coming to a strong cadence, oh, I don't know if you might see where everything is in mm. this edition. <laughs> um, for example, yeah, I'm little, 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 In this case, we're coming to the strong cadence. This is, in anyone's looking at the music, in towards the cadence in 1991. Um, this is coming up to the, the biggest moment that we've had so far in the piece, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, instead of doing that echo, like we're setting something up big, and then we disappear, and then we go to something big again, mm -hmm. maybe to build this, to do a pure forte in this kind of instance. Of course, there are some places where an echo is, is perfect um, idea, but I just think in terms of the longer line, maybe maybe sometimes a pure forte would be more effective. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few places where I'm going to come to this middle section in a moment, but places like, where would be a good example of this? Um, this can you just play, because my singing is so bad, people don't recognize what is happening. Um, yeah, just, just from here, while I blow my nose. You see, that's there's a lot happening there, mm -hmm. and I wonder how can we simplify that? Okay. Where are we going to? Where is the most important point in this? In those, let's say, those three bars. Mm -hmm. Yes. Shall I call again? Could be the the highest note. Remember yesterday I quoted Leopold Mozart saying that when a composer writes this small note, yeah, then that's the important one. Mm -hmm. So although this is so this is bar fifty seven, the first note looks like it's a really small note. Yeah, but 
Yeah, da, da, da. actually this is the most important. Mm -hmm. We understand from the way it's notated. Mm -hmm. It's sort of the opposite of the way that we think nowadays. Um, but if you think of the writing with a feather, mm -hmm. you know, the smaller you had to write, the more complicated it, it was. Mm -hmm. So they, they are taking extra trouble, Mozart took extra trouble to write this as a small note to say to you, this is an important note. Mm -hmm. So maybe, given that the higher Ds will come out quite naturally, maybe in an audition context, you can say, aha, uh -huh, I don't always have to play loud when I'm playing higher. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could go to the appoggiatura at the beginning of 56. Yeah, ba da 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 It's possible. Yeah. Shall we try? So we're using this part. Yeah, ba da 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 Using that first bar to go towards the first beat of 56. Then using the scale up to show I've got control over the top register, I don't have to play loud. And then you show us that the, the D is important. And the next bar. Let's just do that without hold up. Mm -hmm. uh, what shape is that bar? I don't understand. It sounds like a, a finger exercise. <laughs> no, okay. a very good one. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, we need to understand where it's going. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you know the direction you want to show us, but you need to do three times more for us to hear it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, do you see that? That creates a much clearer shape in those. Yeah, yeah. So you're, we're, we're trying to avoid, we touched on it a little bit in the Prokofiev yesterday, like the Prokofiev sonata first movement, this is all in four, mm -hmm. but we want to try and avoid at all costs having four beats in a bar and every bar sounding like a box. Mm -hmm. So it, look for places you can avoid giving an accent. So when you did this scale, you did an extra slur here. He wrote dia da 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 da, dia da 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 da, and you put a dia da da dia da da di. Did you know? I thought you. Oh yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't put money on it, but I think you put in an extra slur there, and what that does is it puts a mini little accent on that second beat. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to talk about second beats in a minute, but let's just let's just have another go at that phrase one more time without piano. diminuendo can we get to it? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe that's now too much, but that idea I think okay, okay. can work. Um, in bar 55, Mozart didn't write any articulation here. I like your your articulation. Da ha ha, da ta ha ha, da ta ha ha. Can we um, uh, exaggerate that a little bit mm -hmm. more? Can you just play me this? Slow motion, put it under a magnifying glass. Da ha ha ta ha ha ta ta. So even even less sustained through the slur. Ya ha ha da ha ha da ha. Or in the second note, I'm singing a little softer than the first. Da ha ha da da ha ha da ta. So underneath what we hear, you don't have to do this because it's not from Mozart, but it's quite a nice idea. We get that rhythm coming out. I'm exaggerating, yeah? but we're doing slowly, so when you do slowly, exaggerate the phrasing. One more time, slow. tempo okay and without forgetting the direction through the whole bar so that's the micro phrasing is good now we need to get the macro phrasing mm -hmm. yeah nice 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 okay. now just before that moment mm -hmm. yes i would breathe after the listening a okay why because the a you're just listening to the question that Haga gives Mm -hmm. And then you answer it. 
and you connect the question to the answer, and then you breathe halfway through the answer. It doesn't really make mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, shall we do together from, no, let's just do small sh chunks. From 52, the upbeat. Do you have bar numbers? Yeah. yeah. B flat. <laughs> See, then it's just a little bit more. I still feel this crescendo that goes through. It's like someone asks, starts asking you a question and you don't listen to the end of it. <laughs> so uh, that's a listening note, okay. the A. Listen. Yeah. It's quite a good rule <laughs> when you're playing music with someone else to listen. <laughs> okay, good. Um, let's look at another place where we can maybe simplify the big line, and that's letter C by 103. Now, where is this going? 103. Yeah, perhaps also to the ah, moment. Oh, <laughs> oh, we're getting a little theme going here. <laughs> So let's do directly from maybe one bar before the piano. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, it's, it's fine what you're doing. I think it needs to be more, um, more clear. Can mm -hmm. you show me the skeleton? Just the most important note, which is D, A, D, A, D, A, G, D. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now, now you showed us all those important notes. Can you just play me the skeleton note on their own? Because we need to find the shape underneath that, because now every beat is becoming important. Mm -hmm. So what's the shape of that first bar? Um. The first bar is more heavy than the rest of it. So the D is maybe more important. So then the shape the, the shape of the bar is diminuendo? No, 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 no. <laughs> you choose, but it's your you have to play the yeah, piece, you I have to believe I it. Say crescendo. Okay. <laughs> Show me just a skeleton, don't write it in yet. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's see how that works with everything. Directly your entry. Excellent. So that's a much stronger shape now mm -hmm. that's happening underneath. So this is, I think, one of the reasons why Mozart is so difficult is we have to have all the micro phrasing well organized but not at the expense of the long mm -hmm. sentence. So every word has to be correctly emphasized, but we mustn't lose the meaning and the shape okay. of the whole sentence. Yeah. Um, <laughs> next phrase, 107. Mm -hmm. What shape are these long notes? Because at the moment they're kind of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say they go with and the uh, piano um, phrasing. Okay, yeah. shall we do that together, bar 107? <laughs> so, so, I don't understand the shape. <laughs> what happens, what happens um, on that last note you played? The orchestra comes in forte. Mm -hmm. So I think this last bar has to be <coughs> opening into that forte. So you're handing over to the mm -hmm. piano. I, 
I've done this piece a lot um, with orchestra without conductor. Mm -hmm. And if you breathe between the low E and the D, as you did here, however well you do the breath, there is always a little hesitation. Mm -hmm. I would suggest you breathe between the two Fs. Okay. So long notes, long notes, bar on B. It will be much more rhythmically incisive. Mm -hmm. the, the, the trouble is, if you breathe there, then the orchestra sort of starts thinking for you, is she taking time to breathe? Is she, there's, there's always a little bit of a question mark before they go, ba da da da. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it. I, d I think that, that the organization of that bar is much easier if you breathe on the bar line rather than the middle, personally. Mm -hmm. Now, what shape, what about these long notes? Um, could we imagine that it's like we're playing a long note on a classical violin mm -hmm. when as they get to the tip the sound gets a little bit weaker so I think it's fine to start strong low D and then just a tiny bit of release at mm -hmm. the end of the note mm -hmm. so don't try and connect to the low D to the F okay oh don't write it in maybe you hate it and tomorrow you want to do something different okay <laughs> <laughs> then I feel very responsible <laughs> So let's do directly this, uh, no, we're going to go back to one bar before C. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a strong shape in those first three bars of C. And then let's see if we you can invite the orchestra into the next big tutti. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Can you play me a really crispy staccato? Much more active articulation. It's getting in a bigger dynamic. The articulation is getting a little bit lost. Okay. Um, just because you don't breathe now between the low E and the D doesn't mean you have to connect them. Okay. D on B, but D on B. The E can still be a little phrased off as if the tip of the bow mm -hmm. um, so that felt a little awkward yeah um, and I wonder can you give me a stronger beginning to the low D mm -hmm. yeah <coughs> just show me that without uh, Halda mm -hmm. yeah. so great, great. So it's, it's got the same sort of um, shape as the beginning of the F on the F of course it sounds very it comes very naturally and it feels Great, so if you were to isolate this in your practice, then think, okay, I like the F, Let, uh, the F is nice, do F a few times, then do the E one step down, and the D one step down, mm -hmm. and then the C one step down, until you get the same kind of shape and um, density of the beginning of the low D. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment, you're tending to think, yay, and it gets a kind of, you don't mean to, but mm -hmm. there comes a crescendo in the second half mm -hmm. of the bar, which I'm not sure it, it fits. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'll leave you to, oh no, we do one, one last time from C, okay. 103. out of context so yeah. just mm -hmm. strong but in the musical shape mm -hmm. you're not trying to destroy the piano <laughs> good um, as a rule of thumb I think we mentioned it yesterday Quant says that when notes are close together mm -hmm. so the same note or just the next note of the scale can be quite legato on the modern flute and with our modern ears I would suggest you do the opposite mm -hmm. sorry Quant <laughs> Um, 
th those are the moments when you, when, you, when you have these scales, for example, where we start the I would love that to sound a little bit more crispy, mm -hmm. um, more delicate. Um, sounds a tiny bit thick, and I've heard you can, you've got an excellent staccato, so. As a general rule, the closer the notes are together, the more clean, the more crispy, mm -hmm. and then the wider intervals don't need to be so short. Okay. So places like, where would be a good example of that? Bar 86, boom, beam, boom, beam, boom, beam. That doesn't need to be too short. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I would like to jump to beam, boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. Can you just show me the skeleton of those, that, the, these phrases? And D major is where the horns come in. Mm -hmm. So don't play that one softer. Okay. They'll hate you forever. <laughs> and you don't want horn players to hate you. <laughs> okay. So I, I would suggest that D major is... Yesterday we talked about D major is yellow, right? Mm -hmm. Who was it? Joanna had a, you had a great D major jacket. So can we just do the shape of this? Bim, bum, 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 bum. Just the skeleton notes. So the, the purpose of this bar, going upwards, taking us to the new harmony. Mm -hmm. Bim, bum, 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 bum. They don't need to be too short at the moment. Mm -hmm. We're just... One more time. So... Mm -hmm. We think on the first beat, probably this is E minor. Yes, it's E minor. Yes, it's E minor. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Something. Mm -hmm. Just that length for the moment. And where is that shaping? I don't mind, but something needs to happen. <laughs> Notes so close together, if you don't shape them, they will sound really as if you're playing very boring, mm -hmm. and you're not. Okay. <laughs> One more time from here. Mm -hmm. So it's great. The first bar, maybe a bit too long now, the G, but <laughs> bim bum 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 bum. Start the next crescendo from where you finished. Bum 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 bim bum 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 bum. Bum, bum. Mm. If you start too strong, we don't need to keep listening. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Last time. From there. Mm. Good. D major. And now relax. Great. Okay. Let's put that together. took us beautifully to, to D major, so that would be like the, the emotional climax of this little section. Mm -hmm. For my taste, the G major after it can be a little bit more relaxed. It's the okay. G major concerto, so we're coming home, mm -hmm. right? So the dominant is strong, and then the, we relax a little. I mean, of course, it's the same microphrasing, mm -hmm. but just the, in the big plan, the yeah. D major is more prominent than the, the G major. Good. 
Um, just play me this last bar. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've lost the bar number with you. 4, 6, 5, 6, 6, 7, 38, 39, 40, 41. Can we just do 41 going into 42 and just listening for the harmony? Mm -hmm. Just very pale, just listening to uh, Helga's harmony. So what happens? It goes to this. And that will give you space to go further. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Just one last little thing to talk about um, before we do a little bit of the second movement. And that's, be very careful about your second beats of the bar. Okay. That they don't become too interesting, too active, mm -hmm. too beautiful. Okay. That they don't, uh, they shouldn't take away from the importance of the first beat of the bar. Mm -hmm. um, where do I mean that? Actually, already in the theme. Bim bam 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 pa. What is the what is the chord underneath the C? Is the famous one from here? Yes, which is. Um, it's a. Uh, you know the. Hmm? D major? D major, D major yeah. seven, yeah. second bar, D major seventh chord. So the C is the seventh. Mm -hmm. So it's an important note in the chord, but in a sort of horizontal sense because it's about the harmony. Mm -hmm. So it's not di dum tam. Mm -hmm. So not an, in that sense an important note, it's important in a di dum tam because it's the, 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 the seventh of the dominant. Mm -hmm. So let's just see if we can get that um, that a little more elegant in that bar. And we might do a little bit of second. No, we're not going to do any second subject. Just give me the very, very beginning, your first entry. Mm -hmm. so if I were to draw a shape of the C, I hear a big sort of balloon. Okay or belly or something mm -hmm, mm -hmm, coming. Mm -hmm. And I think the function of it harmonically is something very horizontal, mm -hmm. can we? And then it's almost released when we start the 16th afterward. Mm -hmm. yeah. One more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, and now these are close together notes, so I think this could sound really crispy. Okay. Last one. Great, and can you just give me three blind mice? The cadence points, one cadence point. Of course, of course we don't want to give an accent on the last B. Of course we want to elegantly phrase off, but not did Oh, I'm already tired and it's only the first phrase. So okay. we keep some of this maestoso character right until the end. Mm -hmm. Just give me the last. I think it's too pale, this last B. Okay, yeah, okay. If you play, we were talking yesterday about if you take away from the dynamic, add vibrato or add color or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you're going to play this soft, then use a more compact color mm -hmm. so that we don't. it doesn't sound as if you completely... Yes, so we, we keep the essence of the mm -hmm. maestro so in there. And it still sounds elegantly rounded off. Mm -hmm. Great. I think we're going to skip the second subject. I'm sure someone will do second subject in mm -hmm. the next couple of days. So let's do a little bit of the mm -hmm. second movement.
lovely, beautiful playing. Very nice. Give a clap. <laughs> Great, you have a very elegant uh, sound which suits this music perfectly. Um, I, I wondered um, whether it's a little slow yeah. In the sense of a little sort of, it becomes a little sort of serious and mm -hmm. um, it's just happy music. You know, there are pizzicatos mm -hmm. in the bass, bass line. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of walking music. Um, why does it get too slow? I think because we, want, we all want to do so much in that first half bar. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes more is less, you know, yeah. or less is more. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. if you play this slowly, the pizzicato in the bass is going to just die between each yeah. pizzicato. So, for me, anyway, it's it's a, a lot more joyful and um, mm. more easy. More easy, yeah, that's a good word. Um, then, no, let's just start with, with finding a tempo where this works, because I think a lot of the little details will just fall into place when it's at the mm -hmm. more traveling tempo. Yeah. Directly or upbeat is enough. <laughs> Second time, repetition, do something. Mm -hmm. yeah. More sustained, less sustained, softer, louder, I don't care. Okay. It's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> you're saying something the second time. When you're saying something the second time, mm -hmm. when you're saying something the second time, <laughs> find a reason for this repetition. Mm -hmm. Now, just in the first half bar, Yori, we touched on it yesterday, I think. One chord, one chord, stepwise, mm -hmm. step, step. So I'm on my tiptoes, da -dum -ba -dum -bom. Mm -hmm. and that will give you somewhere. You're playing the B so pale now, there's nowhere to sort of uh, relax onto the tonic. Mm -hmm. okay. So I would suggest some, s however, there's not a slow, right? You yeah. don't slow it. You yeah. just Actually, there are quite a lot of places where you're not doing the original no, articulation. Some other yeah. Um, other thing. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we talk about that? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll check the... Yeah, I mean, there's, there, is, there are some excellent urtexts. There's the Henle urtext, the Bernreiter urtext, mm -hmm. and it, I think we find a different meaning when we get closer to the original mm -hmm. articulation. Um, it, now, because you're slurring so much, which is originally dia ta ta dia ta ta for example, um, it all sounds a little bit chewy, okay. especially when it was at the slower tempo. So maybe mm -hmm. it, it, a little faster, we'll find a transparency. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, anyway, that, uh, that third slow in the first bar, I don't think is right. Because he writes it twice like that, and then only the last time, when it's together with the orchestra, mm -hmm. he puts three slurs, because I think it's bowing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, that's... That's my answer to, it doesn't really matter what our answers are as long as we think why is it there or why is it not there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can take a little time but not, <gasps> this is going to be a dramatic second movement. <laughs> <laughs> Directly? So we've had the tension, and we're at home again. So 
Dann Tia Tata. Ah, okay. Tia Tata. No, I just said that wrong. Tia Tia. Tia Tia. It's two twos. Mm -hmm. Not four. I was half right. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong, but I was wrong too. <laughs> Maybe it's like mathematics. Two wrong with makes one right. No. <laughs> um, let's do the upbeat to bar 14. Good. Then can we do exactly the same place? A couple of tiny little things. Um, for example, the second eighth note of bar 15. Mm -hmm. Ya da di da gum. The tension is there. The, the, when we arrive at the A, this, it's a relaxed harmony. Okay, it's a bit blurred. But mm -hmm. the interesting part is the first, b the beginning of the first beat. Mm -hmm. ya -da -di -da -dum. So we relax. We touched on it yesterday. Just because you have the most time to get your best sound out doesn't mean that that is the most shiny note. Can you explain me this? Mm -hmm. ya -da -di -da -dum. but not flat. Mm -hmm. And then you're ready to go dom, bom, bom, di to give mm -hmm. direction into mm -hmm. the next. Same place, uh, which was the upbeat to 14. Same, same there actually. The F sharp yeah. is more interesting than the G. Mm -hmm. interesting than the E. The E is an octave higher and it's much, much longer. So that sounds very shiny. Oh look, there's a shiny thing over there. But this is where we need to be focusing on. Mm -hmm. Just play me the, those three notes. D, C sharp. E. Good. And now I need a repeated note over the bar line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I'm getting really fussy now, aren't I? Sorry. <laughs> uh, upbeat, uh, maybe with the Argad, upbeat to 14. Great, great. I'm going to quote Quantz again. He said, in the slow movement, Ornaments should be slow. Mm -hmm. So no telephone trills. <laughs> 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 Always elegant. Mm -hmm. But much clearer phrasing. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Okay. Um, microphrasing important. Mm -hmm. So it means practicing it from the piano part. Mm -hmm. Then you know how each note fits into the harmony or doesn't. Mm -hmm. When it doesn't fit with the harmony, sh give it some spice, make it interesting. When it fits with the harmony, can be paler. Okay. Take care with the longer oh. notes that they don't dominate. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a bit of the theme yesterday, right, in my lesson. Mm -hmm. So long notes are very often the least important notes. Of yeah. course they have to be there, they have to be with a beautiful sound, but the, s the smaller notes is where something interesting happens. Mm -hmm. And all those micro details within the clear shape. Yeah, but I think I think practicing especially something like Mozart from the piano part, but actually all your repertoire from the piano part, it it really will help you to shape the phrases more logically. Mm -hmm. Because you have everything, you can do everything. Mm -hmm. But it just needs a little bit clearer structuring of the story if you like. Yeah. Yeah? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.